So this is something to watch. And this is, you know, it's kind of scary times for, for a lot of people. If you're watching the news and you're listening to, to uh, interest rate hikes going up and what's happened in the past when interest rate hikes go up. So I wanted to do a little bit of a dive on, you know, here's the headline that, you know, tr CTV housing prices drop up to 22% in the Toronto area. I mean, if you just read that on the surface, it's pretty, oh my God, like what the heck, 22% drop. And that's two months of, of, of sales uh, price, uh, price data. So, uh, you know, that's 10%, 10%. We're still up over last year, uh, double digits. So, you know, let's keep that in perspective in terms of what's happening. And, you know, we're not crashing. We are correcting. There's definitely a situation where we are correcting. So I want to get into what drives house prices. I got a special presentation here on the house price driver. Let's get into it. We need some music. Bom, 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 bom. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Um, oh, my slides kind of did some funny, uh, they didn't quite all fit in there. Okay. That should say long-term fundamentals and short-term dynamics. My apologies. I don't know why that happens sometimes when it comes over between my, anyway, apologies for the, 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 it should say long-term fundamentals and short-term dynamics. These are the things that drive real estate. So what drives housing prices, long-term fundamentals and short-term dynamics. If you look at that graph there. The squiggly line is the short-term dynamics and that straight line there in this particular case is the long-term fundamentals. That line can go either way. That line could go straight across like a horizon. That line could go down. In this situation, that line is going up. So there are cyclical movements within a long-term cycle. So I want to get into this because I think it's really important to understand because what we're hearing right now um, between long-term fundamentals and short-term dynamics, over the long-term, these fundamentals matter the most, okay? So long-term productivity and employment growth, for example, rising incomes, the level of new supply, i.e. overbuilding or underbuilding, and population growth. These three things are very important from a long-term fundamental point of view. In, but in the short-term, there are other dynamics that often overwhelm the long-term dynamics. And those short-term dynamics are credit, both the cost, both the cost and the availability of it, uh, and sentiment and speculation. Sentiment being the overall psychology of the market. So those are the short-term dynamics. And they can often overwhelm the long-term dynamics. There are other factors too, but the point is, if we're talking the next decade, population and supply matter immensely, okay? But if we're talking the next year or two, credit and sentiment can often matter more. And we may be about to enter a period where they matter a lot. So short-term, long-term, there are these things called, there's two different types of downturns. There's cyclical downturns and there's secular downturns. A cyclical downturn is a short-term dynamic. Uh, it's where short-term dynamics are deteriorating temporarily, but the long-term fundamentals are still intact. Okay, so a recent example of a cyclical downturn where short-term dynamics are deteriorating temporarily, so those short-term dynamics being the credit and the sentiment. A recent example would be uh, the Greater Toronto-Hamilton area in 2017, where we had um, we had that in, we had that real ramp up January, February, March, and then they introduced uh, interest rates started to go higher. We started to see some policy changes that came into effect with the uh, the 15 point buyer plan, as well as a home foreign buyer tax um, that came into effect, and and that was a situation where the short term dynamics deteriorated quickly. And what happened was the the market did one of these, but a 10 percent, 15 percent correction. And then, and then basically flatlined for a while and then recovered fairly quickly um, because the long-term fundamentals in the area are, were, were intact. They still, things recovered and moved forward. Um, a cyclical, uh, a secular downturn is where short-term dynamics and long-term fundamentals turn negative. So a recent example of that would be the Calgary housing market from 2007 to 2022, where prices fell and they remained below the peak for over a decade as a result of slowing population and oversupply. 
So in 20, 2007, we all know what happened then. There was the great financial crash, the GFC, happened in 2007, 2008, and then prices in Calgary fell due to a shock to the system and interest rates. Um, and then, and then the, the long-term fundamentals were not good because of slowing population and they just have an over, they have an oversupply in Calgary. They don't have the sort of boundaries that we do here in the GTA where they have this, we have this green belt in the lake. Calgary has a very expansive building um, ability. Um, an even starker example would be Ontario in the 1980s to 2000. Back in the 80s, there was a massive overbuild plus low population growth. Um, so we had too many homes and not enough people coming in. And the long-term fundamentals were terrible. The interest rates rose rapidly, as you're probably aware. We had those massive spikes in interest rates and caused a 25% decline. And those prices remained below peak for over a decade. So can you imagine talking to a buyer today, uh, a young buyer and saying, you know, telling them about the prices that in, in the 1980s, they stayed below peak for, they didn't go up for like 10 years. Like they, they went, they, they, they corrected and then they slowly, you know, just kind of did a cyclical movement, but in, 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 a, in a cross sort of band. And then it took 10 years for that to recover because that was a, that was a secular downturn. Canada right now, is entering a cyclical downturn, not a secular one. This is really important to keep in mind. Across Canada, and especially Southern Ontario, the long-term fundamentals are still quite positive. We've got strong population growth. We talk about this on the show all the time. We've got the Canadian government bringing 400 record numbers of, of immigration, 400, 430,000 a year. That's the same amount that the U.S. is bringing in. We have, they have 10 times the population. Just to, give, to keep that in perspective, we have an extremely high amount of population growth coming in. We have inadequate supply response to that, meaning we don't have enough, especially in the single family area, you know, at least in the single family area. The condo development is pretty high, but most people, 50 to 60% of buyers want to have a single family home. They want to have a lot. They want to have a backyard. And we don't have enough of those because the build, I'm going to get to that in a minute. The building on that has not kept up with the supply, the, the demand, and it's just, it's been flat. Um, we also have solid employment currently, albeit we have mediocre productivity growth. We're not the most productive country in the world. We like our real estate. We like our finance. We like our insurance. You know, we're, we're not, we're not really too much into the production side of things, which is a shame because we should be. Um, but two and a half out of three, ain't too bad from a fundamentals point of view. It's actually pretty strong. Um, here's the housing situation in building. We got housing starts. So you got the blue line single family. You can see how it, there was a big building going on in 2005. And then, the, the, then after the, the 08, things flat leveled off quite a bit. And it's been, you know, if you drew a line across that from a trend point of view, it's pretty much flat. Single family building is flat. Our numbers are not catching up to the amount of demand that's out there. The condo builds have, have really jumped up and the rental housing has really jumped up. And if you look at the under construction to the right, you can see how much more condo building and rental building there is in comparison to single family homes. And that's the issue with the uh, supply side of things in Canada. And oftentimes you're going to hear people, oh, there's lots of building going on. There's lots of, but if you get down into the numbers and actually look at what's being built, single families are not increasing. You can see the line there is basically flat for the last 20, 30 years, really. That is the supply situation. So, and then if you get to our, our employment, we're at very low unemployment. Um, and we've been at, you know, it's, it's fluctuating, but we're at a, a very low point. So fundamentally that that graph is pointing downwards from an unemployment rate. And um, from a trend line point of view, we, our employment numbers are quite good. So those are fundamental, um, key fundamental drivers. Delinquencies. So the amount of like, you know, one of the big things that we want to track before there's a correction of sorts or before there's a big problem is credit card payment rates and credit card delinquencies. Credit card payment rates are at a four-year high. That's great. Credit card delinquencies are at a four-year low. That is great. So we're not going to start to see issues with the mortgage market in terms of payments until these metrics start to change. So all of that is pointing to a pretty fundamental, you know, that's a pretty fundamentally good um, 
long-term trajectory. And that's what we're always talking about with Canada and real estate. So we are going to go through a period of cyclical, um, down, like a cyclical downturn. This is occurring. Like we're, you know, that's what we're going through, right? We're about to, we're hitting it. It's starting. It's happening. How long we'll see, you know, these peaks and valleys in this graph below, or this is just an example. Uh, these peaks and valleys, if we look back in history can be shorter or longer, depending on what happens. Uh, short for, short-term fundamentals are deteriorating sharply. Credit costs are rising. So the amount of money being available for people is going down in terms of the uh, cost. Cost of borrowing is going up. And the sentiment is deteriorating rapidly right now. So buyers are taking a break. There's a wait and see approach happening out there. This is all indica indicative of a cyclical downturn. Um, my guess Here's my base case for the year. I'm going to put it on the line and I'm going to stick with this. My base case for the year is interest rates go hard for the next year, month or two or three. They're going to crank, crank, crank. And there will be some sort of breakage in the global credit system. And the, we will go into a recessionary environment. Um, and then the banks, Bank of Canada will reverse course lower rates, and QE will come into play. That's my base case. That's my guess. I don't, I'm not claiming that's exactly what's going to happen, but that's what I'm anticipating happening this year. I think QE. it's a QE. QE. What, what is QE? Yes. Uh, great. Quantitative easing. Right. It's when the, uh, you know, the, the money printing happens and when right. they start, they start, buying government central banks start buying government bonds or uh the you know they, they create money so that they can uh stimulate and and provide liquidity uh provide money to the commercial banks so that the commercial banks can then lend and keep the the, the juices flowing in the economy keep the keep the financial system alive um you know long-term fundamentals matter a lot in real estate um and, you know, the long-term fundamentals of the financial system, uh, we're coming to the end of a big, big cycle. And there's, there could be some, some breakage on the horizon. The long-term fundamentals in the real estate market are, are strong. People and not enough supply. So how we get through this, this cycle here is going to determine a lot where the opportunities arise from a, from a buying point of view, from a selling point of view. We could be seeing a 20% decline in prices and then they could flatline. So, you know, there's discounts out there. They're already happening and they, you know, we'll see how long. My, my cue is when the market, the financial markets start to, when the Bank of Canada reverses course, they're usually late. So by the time they reverse course, I think real estate opportunities are going to be disappearing like in terms of those bottoming or that low end side of things so i think over the next month two three is when you know it could be longer we could have an opportunity to for some good buys uh this year